If you ever fly to Washington DC, look out of the window as you land at Dulles Airport and you might snatch a glimpse of the single biggest story in economics right now. Those big buildings may look like warehouses, but what they are actually is data centers, the biggest concentration of them anywhere in the world. Artificial intelligence might be a bubble, more on that later, but for the time being, it's creating a boom, a massive boom you can see in plain sight down at ground level. Because if you want more AI, you need more data centers, big buildings containing big computers that do the calculations to train and run the models you might sometimes use. And here, in Loudoun County, there are more data centers than anywhere else on the planet. From the outside, the, they kind of just look like any other buildings or like, like kind of like a big flat kind of distribution centre, the kind of thing you sometimes see on the side of the, the motorway in, in the UK. But all of this around here, these are all server centres. They're all data centres, um, basically as far as you can see. Access to these server centres is very rare, but Sky News has been given permission to see inside one of them in the heart of Data Centre Alley. So the whole building is um, a data center, and but each of these is data halls, are Correct. they? Correct, yep. And so within, within each of these areas, you've got different customers that have their own, all of their servers in there. Yeah, so you could have, you know, this room could be a single customer, or it could be multiple customers that have bought different size spaces within there. This building is run by Digital Realty. You might not have heard of them, but they are one of the biggest data center companies in the world, running servers that power nearly all the major AI and cloud services anywhere. The fingerprint, fingerprint sensor as well? Yes, sir. Wow. Multi-factor authentication. Yeah. What you're seeing here is a very special room, a place those AI companies visit to see how their server racks can plug into a site like this. From here, the customer has control. Under the floor and beyond, we have the control. So power and cooling are the, the two key kind of... Yeah, they go power. hand in hand. I can't, I, power generates heat, I need to be able to reduce that heat by cooling. It's not for nothing that these days AI capacity is measured in megawatts and gigawatts. This is all about power. A single one of these racks can suck up more power than a small village. Now, when you think about things like AI, you're probably not necessarily thinking about the physical underpinnings, but it is a very physical thing. When, you know, AI is training, when you're asking it questions, it's going to servers like this. And in fact, that, that there is the GPU. So that's where the, the heavy thinking happens. You can see it's an NVIDIA uh, GPU. And then you've got the storage and then you've got all of the other parts of this entire um, cabinet. And the striking thing, when you look at these cabinets, is just how much they need when it comes to power, just how much they need when it comes to cooling. And you see the cooling here, because beneath the floor, there are all of these pipes, supply and return pipes, each of which is plugged directly into the GPU to pass coolant around to make sure that these incredibly high temperature operations don't damage the chips. It is an extremely complex, energy-intensive operation, but this is what it takes to power the future. The demand for more centers like this has sparked a huge expansion, unlike anything ever seen before. A few miles away, Digital Realty is building a brand new center, a very big one. Now, what you can see behind me, each of these is a backup diesel generator in case the power goes down. And um, what we're talking about in this site, which is still under construction, and you can see the works over there, is potentially energy consumption of as much as one gigawatt. And to put that into context, that is about the size of a large nuclear power station for this site. And it's just one of many underlining just how much power right now is going into AI. Here's one insight that gives you a sense of how big a deal this is. 
On the surface, it looks like the US economy expanded pretty quickly at an annual rate of about 2% in the first half of this year. But now, subtract all the investment associated with IT and data centers, and look, GDP would have been just 0.1%, nearly recession territory. Raising the question, what if this boom goes bust? That is precisely the thing worrying central banks like the Bank of England and, just last week, the International Monetary Fund. There are echoes in the current tech investment surge of the dot-com boom of the late 1990s. It was the internet then, it is AI now. We're seeing surging valuations, booming investment, and strong consumption on the back of solid capital gains. There is also the flip side of the boom. Markets could reprice sharply. This would reduce wealth, consumption and investment, lower activity and could spill over to broader financial conditions. For those inside the AI world, this also feels like uncharted territory. I mean, the kind of terrifying thing is no one knows how much further AI is going to go and no one really knows how much economic growth is going to come out of it. The trends have certainly been that the, the AI systems we are developing get more and more sophisticated over time. And I don't see signs of that stopping. I think they'll keep getting more advanced. But the question of how much productivity growth will that create? How will that compare to the absolutely gobsmacking investments that are being made today uh, in capital for uh, those uh, training runs and for building those more advanced systems? Um, whether that's going to pay off is, is very hard to say. Whether it's a new industrial revolution or a bubble or both, there's no denying AI is a massive economic story with massive implications for energy, for materials, for jobs. We just don't quite know how massive yet. Ed Conway, Sky News in Virginia.